We are live. Welcome to 2022's review. 2022's fresh review and thoughts. Wait a second. Yeah, goosebumps confirmed. Quick and pulse. Heavy labored breathing, screams of terror, jump scares, bloody gory violence are great in movies, but are also things I won't subject you to in this video. Tis the season. Happy Spooktober. I will review at least one horror title every Saturday or at least once per week of this whole month. Yes. All. All five of them. And don't worry. I won't give away in the review itself why this is a horror movie. Not until the thoughts sections. And it's not a spoiler that it is a horror movie. You can tell from right away. Something's gonna... Yeah. And the covers that I placed behind don't give away exactly why. They give you a hint of some of what is in the movie. So yeah, I'm gonna start this video by telling you this was a movie that I absolutely loved. This video will have relatively probably relatively few jokes and I will definitely do I will get into some actual serious issues I realize this video is long I'm gonna do what I can to make it worth your time I start this video with a review most likely with zero spoilers if I spoil anything I will verbally warn before I do so and hold up an index finger until I'm done with the spoilers you can mute and skip ahead until you see me lower my index finger and yeah, as soon as I end the review itself, please note the rest of the video will have lots of spoilers, including discussing the ending. Please don't watch that unless you've already watched the movie. I This is not a movie you should have spoiled for you. I was fortunate enough to, you know, and very, very careful. I did not, no, nobody spoiled this movie for me. So, the... Mm, I guess... Um, yeah, the content warning would definitely spoil stuff. I guess I will get into the content warning when I get into the spoilers and not before, since I won't be talking about it before. That, that works. So. Let's see. Yeah, so. As a cis man who's straight I have never gone on a date with a man so I have to just go by what I've heard from you know people who have gone on dates with men and yeah the movie is rated R and so is this video and I get yeah the MPA rating also gives I guess what I'll say, you know, for sure there is some sexual content, brief graphic nudity, and language throughout. I'm not going to get into any of the other stuff before the spoilers. And I think I'm just going to go ahead and there, there we go. So, whether you, t yeah, I already said I love the movie. If you hate this movie, that does not mean I hate you, and I don't necessarily think that you're a misogynist. If you, or, you know, yeah, or that you hate people who love the movie, if you express a viewpoint that goes against what I say in this video, the only thing I ask is that you keep it respectful, and I'll answer respectfully. If you write something hateful, whether it's directed towards me, or, you know, yeah, basically any people, I'm most likely just going to ignore you. And, yeah, most of what I say in this video, my videos in general, is my opinion. And you are 100% allowed to disagree. So... That 
brings us... Right, I streamed this and thus didn't pay anything extra to watch it. So anything negative I say in this video is not out of bitterness. I don't feel like the movie wasted my time. Nobody forced me to watch it or to make this video. And let's see, it's not that I'm upset at how it compares to what I was expecting. The trailer's not the marketing. I don't have some personal vendetta against anyone who worked on making it. To the best of my ability, the negative things I said in this are fair criticisms based on budget when it came out, what it was trying to achieve. And yeah, so I have only watched this movie once. And I just got done watching it before I started recording this video. And yeah, let's see the plot. I mean, I think I'm just going to say that, yeah, our protagonist is Noah. And she is, like, yeah, she's very frustrated with dating, especially, you know, the, the, ah, what's the word? Yeah, the, the way dating happens today. And, let's see, so the, yeah, so, I heard that this, you know, the, the, the movie was recommended to me, and, uh, you know, yeah, I, I get a bunch of recommendations, but when it's actually on Disney Plus, you know, yeah. And let's see. Okay, so I've seen a number of people point out that despite this being a horror movie, it is on Disney+. Plus. Please keep in mind, it is behind the, the, pass, you know, the password protected age lock. If you are in a place where it is possible that children or teenagers will try to watch something on Disney+, Plus, you can password protect this and anything else above a certain age rating. The same thing goes for... You know, for example, the Netflix Marvel shows, which are for adults, even though most of what Disney ha has made that's MCU is for teenagers, you know, or okay for teenagers, at least. You know, I, I, there's this fellow YouTuber who wanted to do a reaction video on, I think it was Daredevil, and she had trouble finding Daredevil on Disney Plus, even though she had heard it's now on Disney Plus. And after a while, she looked at the age restriction, and for some reason, it was set to, like, teenager or, or something, you know. And she, yeah, in the video, she said she wasn't quite sure why that was, but, you know. And once she set it to 18+, plus, it immediately showed up, you know. And, yeah, so that brings us to the writing. This was written by Lauren Kahn, who has 20 credits as for, for shorts. Let's see. And other than this, she has... Yeah, she, she wrote a movie called... Let's see, you know, the Americans in the audience will want me to call it Ibiza even though I think it's more like Ibiza, if you're from there. And a movie that is coming out in, yeah, sometime next year, it's in post-production, called It's All Coming Back to Me. So, this is the only thing that I know that, uh, the, uh, yeah, the only thing I've been exposed to of her, uh, yeah. I mean, I, I did, I considered, there's one of the, one of the shorts, it's called The Hungover Games. I don't know, it just, 
2012. Back then, a lot of parody was pretty bad. Maybe it's great. I, I'm more interested in her work now than, you know, but yeah, just, you know, 2012, so it came out when the movie did. It's, it's kind of sad when you make a parody that's like way later and you can tell, oh, wow, you just kind of hate this movie and you couldn't let it go in all the years. No, they actually made the parody when the movie came out. Yeah, I, I am going to seriously consider. And stuff called Frenemies, three of those, and two Razzle Dazzle. So yeah, I don't know, maybe this is, maybe this is ringing a bell for you. Behind the music video with Enrique Iglesias, I did not know that there was a lot of writing for those. Fair enough. Anyway, yeah, she did an incredible job here. The, the, you know, the characters act like the real people. They have distinct voices to where you could, like, if you just read a line of dialogue out of context, you know, if, if, if you try to grab a line out of context from the movie and put it in the comments, I would... I believe I would be able to, you know, know who said that. Although, you know, there's like, there's a couple of things that more than one character says. But other than those, yeah, you know, you can really tell, yeah. And, you know, yeah, this is a, this is a, I think that, I, I really love when, women write and direct movies, as is the case here. But I have heard some non-white women say that white women can't write non-white women. And I don't, I, I can't say for sure. I think she did a good job on the, the bisexual best friend character here, who is African-American and female. But the, yeah. The the psychology I found quite credible. Uh, you know, there are multiple characters where you really understand who they are and why they do what they do. And yeah, it 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 felt credible. And the yeah, I'll talk about the the comedy when I get into the direction. Um, as far as I understand, the song choices were were in the script, so amazing work on that. I I'll I'll get into it a little later in the video, but yeah, that was and and it, yeah, cause cause like um, Daisy Edgar Jones, who portrays Noah, said in an interview that she read the script and the the music choices were in the script, and she felt that that made it even more effective even when she just read it so the yeah before I get into direction plot twists I would say the movie does a really great job with the plot twists but some people disagree there there definitely aren't too many of them I don't think they're bad. Some people disagree. And some people have said that they thought there were too few of them or that the they weren't I guess maybe more Yeah, that's a that's a spoiler. But yeah, some people did not think that yeah. And I don't think it was too easy to figure out for the viewer. Some people did think that it was. But this is not one of those movies that works until you learn the twist and then completely falls apart. And even on the first viewing, it's not... I, I wouldn't say it's difficult to keep up with all the twists. Right, and, and uh, some people thought that some things should have been explained more. I personally think that there's enough breadcrumbs we can we can form our own theories it doesn't come like out of nowhere and suddenly like you know so 
Yeah, not a spoiler. Like, if suddenly aliens showed up and then they're just there and there's no explanation, you know, then I'd be like, what? But no, the stuff that's in the movie, it all fits together. Yeah. And let's see the... Yes, that is it for twists. So, direction. This was directed by Mimi Cave. And this is the first movie that she has directed. She's directed some shorts and... Um, is that... Yeah, I can't tell if those are... Yeah, she's directed some some music videos. I gotta say, I am not familiar with any of them. It's just not really... I, I don't pay that much attention to music anymore. It passed me by quite some years ago, and I am completely okay with that. Yeah. Um, and she wrote a... Yeah, one of the shorts that she directed, she also wrote. And, yeah. Her direction is incredible. Like, this is... I think people who say that they don't like movies directed by women haven't watched very many of them because they are excellent. I, I suppose it's possible that somewhere out there there is a movie directed by a woman that is not good. I haven't found it. Uh, okay. To be fair, there's one, but I only know of one. The second Wonder Woman movie, Wonder Woman 1984, is bad, but it's not because it was directed by a woman. And, yeah, the, the, yeah, you know, so, so there you go. I'm not unwilling to admit if a woman does not do a great job directing. This, this was impeccably directed. Now, early in this movie, Noah receives an unsolicited dick pic. I want to believe that, you know, there are guys out there, straight guys who, you know, I, I, I don't know how gay guys respond to dick pics. Maybe they like it, so I'm not going to talk about that. But, yes, I want to believe that there are straight peop straight guys out there who legitimately, who sends dick pics not intending to imply sexual violence. Some maybe just think that a lot of young women would respond to that as positively as young straight men getting nudes from their partner or, you know, for, for a lot of guys, it's just, you know, any woman. Unless you are 100% absolutely certain that someone wants a dick pic, don't send one. You know, again, for sure not to a woman at least. You know, I, there's a, I don't know if it's just a stereotype, but some say that men are more visual, you know, let, let's see, men are more visual and women are more sensual. So, you know, if, if you want to make a woman feel good, you know, caress her or kiss her or something, if she wants to, not if she doesn't. But yeah, the, the, you know, I have never received nudes. I, you know, personally, I don't think, like, if it was just, if it was someone I didn't already know, I'm not sure I would be, but, you know, I've been in, you know, long-term, a couple of long-term relationships with women. Yeah, like, if, you know, if one of them sent something, yeah, I, I would have been, you know, yeah. Anyway. Some people say that the movie is overlong. I hugely disagree. And let's see. Yeah, so, yes, there's a, quoting a fellow critic here, there's this restraint on Cave's part to not go overboard or make it this in-your-face grotesque approach that you could have found under a different filmmaker looking for shock value. And this critic gave it a 3 out of 5. And 
yeah, you know, depending on who you read or watch, what what critic you go for. Some people say there's too much gore. Some people say there's too little gore. And some people say it's somewhere in the middle. I think the amount of gore was perfect. I I really think it, it was, you know, just 100%. I, I, yeah, you know, there were times in this where I was like, I think that's enough. I think you can stop now. I think you've made your point. But that's the idea. That's how I'm supposed to react from it. You know, I've seen movies that were, you know, yeah, that, that are just throwing violence at you just for a reaction, you know. I would definitely say, I would definitely agree, this has substantially less gore than a lot of other horror movies. But it affected me far more than a lot of gory horror movies. An example of a gory horror movie where almost all of the time it just is not scary would be Jason X. You know, a movie with a lot of gore that I continue to love is The Thing from 1982. And I'm also quite a fan of, you know, in, in general, I like Carpenter. But, you know, that, yeah, he has a, he has a number of gory titles. And I'm also a big fan of David Cronenberg. So, you know, gore, I'm used to gore. I've seen, like, I, I probably, the first time I saw gore was probably in a movie. I haven't seen it in real life, thank goodness. I, I was probably 13. Um, yeah, and I was starting to watch, you know, movies for adults. And, yeah, I mean, over the years, I must have watched over a hundred movies with gore. Not all of them with a lot. This movie still got to me. The 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 gore, and and to be sure, there is gore in this. I don't know, like some some people say, ah, oh, there's barely any gore. Okay, I realize that for some people, this movie has very little gore, relatively speaking. But if you're gonna make your review public, please make sure to say there is gore in this. You know, not as much as you may be... There, there is some really, really horrifying stuff in this movie. And, yeah, it's it's more psychological than visceral. And, and just, yeah, like, I've seen... I've seen movies with way more gore than this. And some of them did also really get... Again, the thing from 1982 really, really gets to me. But that's also in part because of the psychological aspects. It's not only the body horror, although the body horror is spectacular. Rob Bottin, you did an incredible job. But yeah, the, the, here it is more the, the implication and the, the implied and, and just, yeah, oh. Somehow some people have said this movie wasn't shocking. I mean, To each their own, I suppose. And, uh, yeah, some people have said, uh, you know, the movie's just repulsive. It's it's just, no one should watch this movie. And some people have said it's somewhere in the middle. And, uh, yeah, I mean... It is... Deeply uncomfortable. It is, it is, it is... Um, yeah, I think the word repulsive is probably good, but not in a way that makes you not want to watch the movie. You know, again, like, ah, uh, I should have thought of a good example. I mean, from what I've heard, I'm not sure that Eli Roth movies would, you know, it's it, based on what I've heard about the Hostel movies, it sounds like they would be way more than, um... The first Saw movie, you know, I, yeah, the, the, that was also some, one that, that quite got to me. Um, yeah, I'm not, I, I'm not sure what movie I can think of where the, where I legitimately felt like, okay, this is just too much gore. I don't want to watch this. Uh, actually... 
maybe it's not fair because it's been a lot of years. Maybe it, maybe I would be okay with it today. But the first time I tried watching Brain Dead, I quit like 20 minutes in, and I've never tried watching that movie again. Peter Jackson, you did an incredible job on the Lord of the Rings trilogy, and you did a job on the Hobbit trilogy. I'm not sure I'm gonna watch your your really really early stuff. And and I do think the Frighteners is is quite good. Uh, you know, it, it benefits from a great cast. Uh, I I Jake Busey, holy crap! And it's you know. I can't believe I'm blanking on his name. I swear I'm not going to spend forever, but the... Yeah, what would be a good way to... Oh, right. Just look up the movie itself. I don't know why I didn't think of that. Until I did, I mean. Jeffrey Combs, you know, I mean... If you filmed Jeffrey Combs like half-heartedly reading the the dictionary it would be gripping to watch you know the man is incapable of right that is michael j Fox. I, I was gonna say yeah I, I feel bad for the ah i forget what it's called but the the condition he has today anyway the yeah, the the movie I found it I found it it went right up against the line. It didn't quite cross the line into something that I wouldn't want to to watch. You know, I mean this is a movie I'm going to be watching again. There's no doubt about that. And yeah, some people said I knew exactly where it was going all the time. Some people said I had no idea what would happen next. And some people came down somewhere in the middle. I mean, I wouldn't say that I never knew. I, I you know, there there were times where I had like guesses as to what would happen next, and some of the time those guesses were correct. What I would say, more to, to me, more importantly, than, you know, yeah, there were times where I could guess what would happen next, but it was never boring to me. I never felt like, well, whatever, you know, and that, and I mean, as someone who has watched hundreds of horror movies, you know, over 20 years, yeah, let's go with 20 years. I've seen a lot of movies, you know, there's a lot of horror movies where you can kind of guess what's coming next. You know, the, the, I don't think that horror movies are uniquely, ah, what's the word? Some people seem to think that horror movies are inherently a lesser genre. I hugely disagree. I think horror, it really is, the, you know, I mean, yeah, I guess you, it's probably not a surprise. A fan of John Carpenter and David Cronenberg, I think horror movies can be amazing. You know, I think a lot of their work is amazing. I think it suffers from kind of the, there's a there's a fast food commodification of the genre that is sort of because it like after the first Friday the 13th movie, which is enjoyable, but not a particularly good movie. You know, I I maintain, I have watched all of them multiple times, every single Friday the 13th movie, including, including Freddy vs. Jason. All of them, you can sit, you know, I'm not gonna make a general statement, but me personally, I can sit down and watch, you know, I, I mentioned that Jason X, I don't find it, I don't think the gore is, like, effective. But I laugh at some of the jokes, and, you know, I mean, it has some self-awareness that I kind of appreciate. You know, I mean, the scene where more than one character says, we love premarital sex, you know, that, 
yeah, they they self awareness. I appreciate that, it's, especially after so many movies and so many of them being very very similar to each other. But yeah, I can sit down and watch any. Like I could, you know, you could you could. Uh, uh, let's see. What's a like? If you did like a, a, a roulette wheel, and and you know there was a Friday the Thirteenth movie on every single, you know, yeah, I could sit down and watch the one that the uh, roulette ball is that how the, I'm not a gambling person, but yeah, I could and and yes, no, seriously, even the remake, it's not a good movie. None of them are, but you can like some of it is legitimately. Some of it works, you know, none of them are just, which, you know, and, and I don't usually like horror movie remakes. I think the, the Nightmare on Elm Street remake is pure garbage. I, I cannot understand. Like, I want to say Brad Jones gave a relatively positive review. Like, were we watching the same movie? Anyway, whatever. It's fine. After the first Friday the 13th. You know, over the next, let's see, what was it? Over the next year, they made, you know, not the people who made that movie, but there were 20, I, I want to say, yeah, it was a huge amount. It was just ridiculous amount of slashers that were just pumped out because you don't need a large crew. You don't need a lot of, like, you don't need a good script. You don't need good acting because that's not what the core audience is there for. They just want to see gore, you know, and so a lot of slasher movies are terrible but then there are some that are absolutely amazing. You know, I I hesitate to call the original the, the 1978 Halloween a slasher movie. It's almost more of a proto slasher movie. But the 2018 sequel that's a really strong that's a really great you know slasher movie and I yeah, it's on my mind cuz the sequel's coming out uh less than 2 weeks from now. And the the Halloween Kills, I understand why some people really don't like that movie. I'm, you know, I'm rewatching it now to you know prepare for watching the the newest one, which I'm psyched for. I cannot wait to see. Yeah, I get why some people hate Halloween Kills. I think it is a pretty good, not absolutely amazing movie, and I think it's it's certainly interesting, you know, and and that's yeah. Horror can be good. There's just there's it has a bad rap, and yeah, you know the 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 point I was trying to make was a lot of horror movies are predictable because there are so many horror movies, and at the end of the day, like I mean, if you're making a comedy or an action movie or a sport, okay, maybe not a sports movie, but yeah, like you can get mine laughs out of very different situations. You can build action scenes around very different circumstances but like horror and sports and you know sports you have to, you kind of have to end with you know whether it's a boxing match or a basketball game you kind of have to have that as the ending so you know and and you have people tr you know training for that and then you have like drama between characters and oh no will this person really not play the game and you know um, no, they, they will. Of course they will. We build up the character over so long, of course they're going to end up playing, you know. And horror movies, I mean, at the end of the day, if you end up in a situation that is no longer scary, and you can't, you know, get get back to a scary situation without completely breaking the the... Uh, the illusion, the, the, you know, the, the willing suspension of disbelief, you know, you're screwed. You're just, you're just plain screwed. No one is going to put up with a horror movie where after a while it's just not scary anymore. And then, you know, uh, you know, what, what do you do at that point? Just stop the movie awkwardly or do you like try to have like, you know, so yeah. There's there's a certain level of predictability to a number of these movies. I was always emotionally engaged in this movie. I, I never felt like, oh, we're doing this. You know, even when I guessed correctly, I was still on the edge of my seat. And yeah, you know, I 
I feel bad for the people that this movie didn't work for. Now, let's see. Yeah, so quoting a fellow critic, this director knows her way around a camera. And... Yeah, and, and some people say the, the tone is very uneven. I mean, I see what they mean. If I was... Uh, what's the word? Again, it worked for me. You know, when it wanted me to laugh, I laughed. <sighs> yeah, no, really, I, I did. And when it wanted me to be really freaked out, I was. So, yeah. And, yeah, quoting another fellow critic, They arrive, like the film's best surprises, with slick confidence and sickening glee. It's the movie's gnarly details and savage sensibilities and the relish with which it presents them that makes it feel like something new. Cave and Khan have fun corrupting basic comforts, like pasta or the Golden Girls theme song. Seriously. By recontextualizing them in upsetting ways. Perfectly put. Yes, that is... Yeah. And let's see. The horror and another fellow critic, the horror and fresh hits much closer to home by being all too realistic in its depiction of the threats and dread women experience on a daily basis just for being women. Girls are trained to never walk alone, never leave their drinks at the bar unattended for rapists to poison with roofies, to take their keys out on the way to the car and insert them between their fingers to use as weapons in case a man takes a run at them. Instead of teaching men not to behave this way, we teach women to defend themselves. And let's Right, and yeah, some people say that there's too big of a reveal too early on. I love that they handled it that way. It was just completely like, yeah. And yeah, I, w I will talk about it when I get to the spoiler section, but yeah. And, yeah, some people love the dorky, awkward white people dancing. Some people hate the dancing, and some people are somewhere in the middle. I loved it. I thought it was, like, yeah, see. I almost never dance. And it's in part because I know I would look just as dorky. As, yeah. And and the thing, you know, it, it would be just kind of painful to watch if not for the fact that it is like i mean yeah it's it's these two people on a date dancing you know the, the um they're enjoying dancing and they're enjoying dancing together and because of that it's not like cringe inducing to watch you know and and you are 100% allowed to laugh at it both actors have said that let, let's see i think both of them had ah uh, i don't want to give away uh, yeah the some of the moves that they bust out during the dancing were moves that the actors came up with and see. yeah so the the movie starts with uh, you know Noah preparing, you know, she, she's just about to walk into the, the restaurant, I guess, the, the place where she has a date and she's, yeah, making the final preparations. And yeah, the, the early parts of the movie do a really great job setting up the rest of the movie, like, of, of something that's very important for this movie is how Noah feels when she first meets Steve. And that is in part because of how bad her interaction, like, 
she goes on various dates, you know, she, using dating apps, and she is very frequently extremely unfortunate. And yeah, when she meets Steve, the uh, it it yeah, it's so refreshing. I gotta real quick make a note. Um, There we go. And yeah, so I am not going to give away whether the ending is happy or sad. It fits with what came before. And I personally love the ending. I think it is pitch perfect. It's just so, so good. Some critics say that the ending is too abrupt. And I, I can understand what they mean, but I, I just think it's perfect. And yeah, the the ending does not rely on Deus Ex Machina, can other convenient writing. And yeah, it's just it's a it's a one hundred percent perfect ending, and that's really difficult and rare for horror movies. And yeah, I'm not gonna give details on the ending titles, but yeah, there's a there's a part at the start of them that is really great and worth sitting through. I, I, yeah, I guess in today's language, it is a post credit scene. I, I'm used to post credit scenes from all the comic book movies I watch. I'm not used to them for non-comic book. Uh, yeah. That brings us to the characters. And, yeah, this is the first thing I see Daisy Edgar Jones, who plays Noah, in and I gotta see more. Uh, there's absolutely no doubt I have got to see her in more stuff. And she's she's just so charming and relatable. Like she is just a normal person. As, you know, as if there were if there were a normal, she is normal. You know, she's she's so easy to relate to. You completely understand the things that bother her and the things she care about and the the way she feels about things and yeah and Sebastian Stan plays Steve I am a fan of his you might say that I stan Sebastian I am a Sebastian Stan yeah that was that was almost as bad as his pickup lines and mine wasn't even a pickup line I love him in the MCU. I barely know any of his other work at all. If you blink at the wrong time, you'll miss that he's even in Black Swan. The two of them are incredible together, and I, yeah, I have to see more. Yeah, great chemistry. I have to see more where he plays something very different from the MCU because he sells it. He really is incredible. And Jonica T. Gibbs plays Molly and uh, yeah they're they're really great together they're so supportive of each other and uh, yeah quoting a fellow critic Noah's best and seemingly only friend Molly is black and bisexual a token sidekick character whose personal life job and dating prospects we learn almost nothing about though we do know that she's prone to too loudly encouraging Noah to get that D and yeah, it definitely is an issue, yeah, you know, written by a white woman, directed by a white woman, and the black woman is present and, like, is, is a support, for sure, but we really don't get very much into, yeah, I, I, can, I can understand if, you know, some people would say that it's it's too yeah and i don't know if i'm pronouncing this right brett deer plays chad they actually had to name him chad and he is just he does such a great job as just the worst date and it opens the movie, so you, uh, yeah, not not at all a, a spoiler. And don't worry, not all of it is in the trailers. Yeah, like, wow, this guy, you know, j yeah, 
if you are a man and you feel like, why don't women want to date me? Watch that scene, take notes, and do the opposite of everything he did. And I can't believe I... Some people are going to get angry if I don't say the following. Not every man in this movie is awful. You know, if, if that matters to you. I do, I, there are so many movies made by, for, and about men where all the women are really negatively depicted. I don't see why women shouldn't be allowed some of their own. You know, and a bunch of these movies don't even really... There aren't really even trying to comment on that like I yeah there are multiple movies made by for and about women it's, you know right right now she hulk is really it's, it, it, yeah a lot of people are angry about that show because oh you know so many negative male characters yeah cuz they're commenting on them like like they're not just randomly bad they the you know these movies and shows are actually trying to comment on the way men treat women and why that, you know, but yeah, I, there are tons of movies where men make women out to be bad. And it's just because a lot of men find it very threatening if a woman is like strong and has a career and is confident. Now, let's see the... I, I can't really go into details without spoilers, but some would definitely argue that Molly is not the only character who kind of just exists for the, the narrative. It's not that we're not supposed to learn a lot about her or understand her. It's just, yeah, she's she's there as a support for a white woman. So that's, yeah. And, yeah. You know, some in the cast are called upon to look scared, happy, angry, sad, and others, and they just, they nail it. Like, I just, and, and you know, yeah, Sebastian Stan is excellent. Daisy Edgar Jones is a revelation in this movie. Like, she steals the show. Although the movie is hers to begin with, but yeah, like, she is just... Wow, the the um, I yeah I gotta see her and more stuff. I yeah I gotta try not to. I I hope I'm not com coming across as as creepy. I'm not gonna like you know I'm not gonna obsess over her or or anything like that. I'm just a just tremendous talent. You know I I intended as a compliment, and if I'm being too forward, I completely accept that. So, the, right, the IMDb quote section has four entries, and I did not read them until now, because, you know, the, the, uh, spoilers, you know, potential spoilers. Yeah, all of them, okay, not all of them. Three of the four are, are spoilery, and, yeah, but they're all, all four of them are, are great. The, yeah, the the dialogue here is just absolutely amazing. The the yeah, I mentioned everybody has a different voice. The you know part of it is also the the acting performances. They deliver their lines you know differently from each other. And there are p parts of this movie that have a lot of dialogue and and where like some people have said oh you know have something else happen yeah um it's not like quite you know it's it's not it's not the uh, no that's a that's a spoiler the dialogue is great i i was hanging on their every word And the the early date, the the good date, that happens early in the movie, like I, wow, that really like. Again, I'm I'm straight and I'm cis. I am not into dudes. 
but I completely understand why he is, you know, an, an incredible date, and why she really enjoys being on the date with him. Now, the cinematography was handled by DP Paweł Pogorzelski, who has 29 shorts and 21 movies, although are any, ah, uh, couple, yeah, some, let's see, one music video, I guess, yeah, and I have not yet watched Midsommar and Hereditary, I gotta get around to watching them, he shot both of those movies, and I do happen to know they are incredibly well shot, I have heard that from people whose opinions on the matter I trust, and yeah, like, yeah, abs absolutely amazing. This is the only thing that Powell has DP'd that I've watched, but again, I, I got it. Yeah, just, yeah. And, you know, one of the things is this, like, there are multiple close-ups close of, you know, the, the yeah, I guess that's, Maybe also part and editing. Yeah, I'll, I'll move on to the, the... The editing was handled by Martin Penza, who has 10 credits total for feature length. And I gotta say, again, I have not watched these movies, although I hear good things about Wild and Dallas Buyers Club. But yeah, the the... I'm going to quote a few fellow critics. Sometimes the camera will rest on Noah's face as something horrible becomes clear to her. Close-up of mouths showing both sensuality and aversion. Like someone on a first date, director Mimi Cave focuses on body language, giving us close-ups of pouty lips and twinkling eyes. We fall in love with Steve from his awkward dance moves to his ability of bringing Noah out of her shell. And, and that's another thing that really, like, you completely understand why he gets her to lower her guard. And that is something, like, when, when you have romance scenes, you really have to have, like, the chemistry has to be right or the movie just does not work. You know, and that's the kind of thing where, like, I've seen comedies where the people telling the joke, you know, Frequently, you have more than one person involved in a joke. Some of the comedy, like, you know, I love Liar Liar. I think it's some of Jim Carrey's best work. I'm not sure I would say there's great chemistry between him and the, the child actor playing his son. I, I, I remember reading a review that said something along the lines of, Carrey doesn't appear to respect or even particularly like his child uh, co-star and uh, you know the the review pointed out that was never the case with john i can't believe i'm blanking on his last name um no wait i think it's the first name i have wrong i'm i'm gonna find it i swear it won't take long robin williams you know robin williams and and that is yeah I haven't seen all the movies he did where he had where he was along with kids but yeah you know Jumanji ah uh, what's the one with the okay just, just I have watched more than one movie that he yeah yeah I get the sense you know I mean you have uh, you know one one of them's teenage Christmas yeah. Uh, not Stuart Dunst. Wow. Have I not gotten enough? I think I got enough sleep last night. I, I should not. Yeah. Anyway. I think it's because Deadpool has the, the thing. Wait. Is it Kirsten or Kristen? Kirsten Dunst. Who, you know, she spends a chunk of the movie playing this annoying kind of, you know, you're, you're supposed to, you know, I mean, it's because of trauma and she gets better but yeah early on she's supposed to be kind of annoying you're supposed to not like her you're supposed to think there's something wrong and yeah like when he interacts with her like ew, yeah and sometimes he's annoyed with her and you know they they make jokes to each other that you know but i don't get the sense that 
Williams legitimately doesn't like working with her. You know, you get, like, he's he's essentially stooping down to her level. And, and you know, to be fair, he's also supposed to be kind of his, his um, he hasn't aged emotionally. So, you know, but yeah, that, yeah. Right, and I guess, you know, so yeah, the, the movie is part romantic comedy and part horror movie. And yeah, I guess uh, as a very brief, you know, I, I've i watched a bunch of romantic comedies. I don't understand why a lot of guys think the genre is terrible. Yeah, whatever. A number of guys think the genre is terrible. I don't. I quite, you know, I realize that it's problematic, but I do like Pretty Woman. Uh, you know, the take explains why it's problematic. And I, it's not only a romance movie, but I think uh, Amélie, the, the French movie, I'm going to go ahead and get the full title since that makes it easier to identify. The Fabulous Destiny of Amélie Boulin, or in French, Le Fabuleux Destin d'Amélie Boulin. And, yeah, you know, that's, and, and that's also really, the, the chemistry is there, you know, they just, yeah. And, yeah, so I, um, let's see, I I guess I could check one more time. The yeah, according to Wikipedia, the the budget for this is somewhere between fifteen and twenty million. I have not been able to find any, you know, yeah. There's not. I guess there isn't box office since it went directly to streaming. And you know, yeah, if you're in Western Europe, you know, it's on. Star on Disney Plus. If you're in America, it's on Hulu. So yeah, you know, it's. I I hope a lot of people watch it, and I hope a lot of people love it. And yeah, having read reviews, you know, a lot of people watch it. A lot of people really love it, like I do, and some people don't, and that's fine. Now, let's see the. Yeah, the, the set design, this is not a movie with an absolutely huge amount of different settings and sets. So it becomes very important that the set design is is really, really strong. And it is, like, uh, I don't know if I can... I guess I shouldn't give away exactly what the, the settings are, but one of one main major setting is just like they they took such great care to make this place look exactly right and just you you really get a sense of what it yeah just you know the the very first time you visit this place you just immediately get a sense of what you know yeah and let's That brings us to the music. Now, the composer for this was Alex Summers, who has composed for seven documentaries, seven movies in total, including this one. And I am not familiar with any of his... Uh, their other work. I guess I Alex could be a... I'm not 100% certain as to their gender, so I'm going with they for now. But yeah, um, there's 84 and a half minutes, or an hour and 24 and a half minutes, of the soundtrack right here on YouTube for free. I recommend to listen to it. I did. It's just, yeah, like... There's some original score, and there's... Yeah, there's a, there's a pretty good amount of licensed music... And 
yeah, you know, some some critics say, you know, enjoyable soundtrack, love the way they use famous songs. Some people didn't really feel that it worked. I thought it was perfect. Like, every single needle drop in this movie is just spot on. Like, and, and just, and some of this music, like, they take stuff that, because of the new context, because of what they do with it, it's just, oh, wow. You know, sometimes it's really, really funny, but in a dark, edgy way, sometimes it's it's absolutely horrifying and just, but yeah, it's, yeah, just, wow. And the sound design is excellent. This has some scenes where you really have to, uh, yeah. See, if you've watched the movie, you know exactly what I'm talking about, but I'm going to keep it vague enough. There are, there are scenes in this movie where the complexity and the detail, the, the just, yeah, it's extremely important that the, the sound design is perfect. Because if it's just a little bit off, it's not going to work at all. Like... If you if you are sure it won't ruin the movie for you, try watching one of the scenes. I'm you know what I'm talking about. If you've watched the movie already, watch the scene on mute and just look at what a difference the the it, it yeah it's completely different experience. And yeah the the yeah so that brings us to the comedy. Okay, so yeah, I'm just gonna put put out there, you know, I try to I try to be fair. I try to say, you know, okay, some people didn't like, so you know, so that you know, watching this, maybe you won't, maybe you won't feel the way I did. Some people said the movie was not funny at all. I don't know why they're calling it a comedy. And others, you know, I, I forget the the name, but a fellow YouTuber said the the, you know, that's that's where I got that phrasing, dark edgy comedy, and. I, I know, um, I realize some, some progressives say that edgy comedy is not, like, you, sh you should try to avoid that, you know, and for sure, I think the, the edgy jokes that make, that, that kick down can't stand those, but when you have edgy humor, and, and this movie has some edgy humor where it's on the side of the people who are, um, what's the word? Yeah, you know, people, people who are in the the in a in the minority, maybe not literally, but in a minority situation. You know, they are in, they are put upon, and yeah, like it, it just. I I thought they did an absolutely incredible job, and I think it was necessary. I think if I can understand why some people who didn't find it funny hated the movie. I think if I hadn't found it funny, I would I might hate at least a lot of the movie. But the the comedy, and that's also where some people say the tone is uneven, that we have this I mean, I can understand if some people I, I'm not sure I saw anyone say the words tone whiplash, but I can understand because sometimes it does really jump back and forth between just repulsive and this joke where it's like you know and and yeah like before it gets into the the really horror the, yeah before it gets into horror stuff there are some jokes that it's like that was a that was a dad joke that was straight on a dad joke like you know and then you have this horror stuff so so yeah i 100 percent understand I, yeah, I laughed every time I was meant to. I was grossed out every time that the movie, the, the filmmakers meant for me to. So, yeah. Um, but it's definitely like, if you don't, if you, if you only like either horror that's, that's like, that really gets to you, gets under your skin, or edgy humor, but not both. I don't think the movie is really for you, and and I feel bad for you because you're missing out. 
but I, yeah, I would not recommend it to, to, but if you do love both, that, yeah, that is part of the, your, you know, that, that's part of what makes the, the target audience for this. So, uh, yeah, some people, okay, yeah, pacing. Some people, I'm gonna, I'm gonna quote a few fellow critics here. I hugely disagree with what they say, but they felt this way, you might too. Takes too long to get going. By the time it did, I was zoned out. Too long and the middle is too slow and sane. I think people today expect movies to move what I would call too fast. There's this expectation that the story will go through a lot of changes over the course of it, and some people disliked, th you know, this movie. I agree, it, this movie does not move as fast as a number of movies do today. And it definitely not does not have as many changes. Like, if I were to compare it to another, like, big movie, maybe something like Joker. You know, not a lot of, you know, it's, it's not a huge amount of different scenes, and it doesn't move super fast, but it puts you there, you know? And and I don't think, you know, if you didn't like Joker, I personally loved it, but if you, if you hated it, you might still like this movie. But, you know, pace-wise, I would say, that, yeah, like, both of them are... You know, they, they put you right there with the the protagonist and you feel what they're uh, yeah. <laughs> you maybe don't feel what they're feeling but you understand why they're feeling it obviously plenty yeah I don't know why like apparently I, I didn't see much of it myself but I've heard that the media the mainstream media really really freaked out over Joker and said that if you like the movie you're a sociopath or something like that and that's I, I completely disagree with that. It's, you know, I, I think it does a really great job of just pointing to, like, this is, like, there are people really suffering, and the powerful could do something, and way too many powerful refuse to. And honestly, that's probably why the mainstream media really didn't like They were like, oh, wow, um, I think we might be in line for the guillotine. Uh, uh, squirrel! Squirrel! So, so it's just like obviously no one. Hopefully, there will be no guillotining. The revolution, I hope, will be completely peaceful, nonviolent. But yeah, the the yeah, you know the the pace. I'm gonna put that in case I need it for future reviews. I personally thought that the pacing for this movie was completely perfect. It, it was completely justified by the story and themes. I was never bored, not for a second of this. So, I... Huh. I don't usually forget that, but okay, I'll fix that real quick. The movie is an hour and 51 minutes long, if you don't count the end credits. And with end credits, and you don't have to stay for all of them, it's an hour and 55 minutes long. And, yeah, you know, so, yeah, some people say it's only the very start and the very end that are good. And I completely disagree. But I, I understand their point of view. I think it depends on also what you want out of the movie, and I want to be emotionally engaged and to have, like, f to, to, for the movie to provide food for thought. And, you know, I'm not going to say that it's wrong to watch a movie without those, or that you watched it wrong if you didn't feel you got those. But yeah, I can understand, you know, if you legitimately felt like you didn't get those, or it's just not something you're that interested in, you know, again, some people think of horror movies as just fast food, like, ugh, I got, I got time to watch a movie, I don't really have time to research one, okay, this says horror, play, and then, you know, you expect it to be, you know, a Friday the 13th film, which, you know, gets the job done, but yeah, like, you know, and, and, yeah.
if at first you're not that interested in the movie, I would say give it 40 minutes. If 40 minutes into the movie, you don't care what happens next, go ahead and turn it off. Uh, I'm not sure there's anything in the rest of the movie that is going to get you hooked the way that, you know, the first 40 minutes hooked me. So, yeah. Now, the... I really appreciate this is actually a movie where actions have consequences. There are too many horror movies that don't really. And... Okay, so this, this is where I get into what did I think was the best element of this movie. I suppose... Okay, I'm going to have to come up with a spoiler-free... I wrote something that I thought... Yeah. Um, before watching, I wrote something that I thought was going to be the thing, and... Wasn't. It was not. So... I swear I'm not going to spend forever. But, yes, I would say a spoiler-free version of the best element in this movie is the, the way that it comments on what it is commenting on, the, the, the depth it gets into, and the, the multiple different ways in which it explores the... the Yes. And this is where I'm supposed to get into the worst aspect. How, uh, what, what am I supposed to say if I don't think there's anything wrong with... Technically, not everything is absolutely perfect, but the strengths so greatly outweigh the weaknesses. Um, yeah, I, 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 can't, I, I can't come up with anything in this movie that legitimately... I, that I can point to and say this is ah that I really think this could be no, there's nothing that I th that I personally think they could have done a better job on. The the way that black characters are treated by these two white women writing and directing that is that is my only the only thing that I can really point to and say uh, that could have been better. I, I hate to say it, I don't like criticizing women. I do think, ultimately, the, they could have... And, you know, the actors give great performances. It's not at all on them. So, the worst thing according to others. See, that... I guess... Yeah, the, the thing that I thought would, would be worth... Sharing with the group is that a lot of people did not think that this was scary and I've already tried to, to explain why I think but but yeah a number of people did not think this movie was scary and that is you know and obviously like if if you watch this movie and it does not scare you I understand being frustrated about that so I the thing I was most worried about, I, I had read that it was, that the, the commentary was not, uh, yeah, there was maybe too one-sided or, or such, but yeah, uh, that was not at all the case. I was most looking forward to the concept, even though at the time I was writing it, I did not know exactly what the concept would be, I just read some critics saying amazing job on the concept so yeah I, and and that it was that it would comment on something that i don't want to spoil here but yeah if if the i'll i'll name it at the very start of the spoiler section that that will be you know yeah if you want to know it but you don't want detailed spoilers i'll say it at the very start I do think that the trailer gives at least a little bit too much away, but I 
I have no idea how you would possibly advertise this movie without spoiling anything. Like, I, and and really, if you have no idea, like, I really hope that no one sat down to watch this thinking it would be like Pretty Woman or Amelie or something that, you know, from start to finish, romantic comedy kind of thing. You know, if if you start to watch it thinking it's that, you know, turn turn it off when you when you stop, because it gets really like some of the stuff like I know people who would love the romantic comedy stuff. And I know people who would hate the romantic comedy stuff. I'm not sure I know very many people who would love both. But, yeah. Now, and, and you know, for, for the fellow dudes, please keep in mind, this movie was not really made for us. This was made for women. And, you know, like, I, I don't know what the exact number is, but, like, hypothetically speaking, shouldn't women make up 50% of the planet? I think it's okay for them to every so often make a movie that is specifically for them. We men have made many movies that are specifically, that are primarily for men. So I really don't think that's, uh, yeah. And yeah, some of the, the covers and posters do give too much away. But again, I'm not sure how they would get, how, how you know, how do you sell this movie without spoiling anything? That's really, really difficult. You know, like, I, I tr I'm trying to do it here verbally because I'm, like, praising the various aspects of it. But if you have two minutes of trailer or a single poster, yeah, you, you kind of have to, like, yeah. Anyway, on Rotten Tomatoes, this has an 81% on the tomato meter based on 197 reviews. And the audience score is 79%, so not a huge d difference there, as there has been with some made-for, by-and-about-women media recently. <sighs> Let's see. Yeah, and the critics' consensus is, as gripping as it is upsetting, Fresh makes a provocative meal out of the horror of modern dating. And the audience says, it'll be tough for some viewers to swallow, but if you're in the mood for some smart, creative gore, fresh satisfies. And, yeah, of the, uh, you know, the, the, yeah, so the critics, the average rating was 7.10 out of 10, and 160 out of 197 were fresh. And the audience, you know, it's, it's based on over 500 ratings, but, you know, it's, it's streaming, so it's not going to, you know, it's not necessarily going to be watched by as many in as short amount of time as, a, you know, movie in theaters. And the, yeah, so 79% of them gave it, uh, let's see, gave it a 3.5 out of 5 rating or higher. And the average rating was 3.9 out of 5. And yeah, that does mean that the movie is certified fresh and on metacritic it is uh, uh 67 out of 100 based on 34 critic reviews and the um six uh there it is 6.3 for the users 6.3 out of 10 I'm just really quickly going to look at... So, yeah, of the 34 critic reviews, 24 of them are positive, 7 are mixed, only 3 are negative. And, yeah. And for the user reviews, there are... Let's see real quick. 17 user reviews. And the most recent is from the 23rd of August. Yeah. I realize I am a little late to, to this movie. It premiered in March, I want to say. Yeah. So. 
in my defense, it usually takes significantly longer than half a year for me to get around to watching something. So there are on, on IMDb, there are 424 user reviews or 317 without spoilers. I read the top 100 of the spoiler free ones. And the, yeah, so the 100 top voted spoiler free IMDb user reviews 11 gave it 1 out of 10, 1 gave it 2 out of 10, 3 gave it 3 out of 10, 13 gave it 4 out of 10. 14 gave it 5 out of 10, 14 gave it 6 out of 10, 17 gave it 7 out of 10, 23 gave it 8 out of 10, 11 gave it 9 out of 10, and only 3 gave it 10 out of 10. But yeah, the, the, yeah, that means more people, I, yeah, yeah. Of the, of the popular reviews on IMDb, the user reviews. The ones that, yeah, the popular ones tended to be negative or like so-so. But there were still, you know, 23 that gave it out of 10, 11 that gave it 9 out of 10. So that's, that's not nothing. And there are 188 links in the IMDb external reviews section and 130 of the links work and are in English and I read all of those reviews as well so yeah on IMDb it has you know while while Rotten Tomatoes agreed that the movie fresh is fresh certified even on IMDb it only has a 6.7 out of 10 and that is a fairly com, you know, of uh, horror movies that that people don't think very highly of are around, you know, six, six point three to six point nine around there. You know, the the ones that aren't actually poorly made, but you know, maybe didn't find its audience and that kind of thing. And that is based on forty nine thousand four hundred seventy eight IMDb users, and. Yeah, 33.7 did vote 7 out of 10. 21 voted uh, percent voted 6. 18.9 voted 8. 7.5 voted 5. 5.89 and 5.8 10. 3 voted 4. 1.9 voted 1, 1 1.5 voted 3, and 1% voted 2. So, yeah, there are people all over the, the yeah. Now, the, let's see, yeah, so this was nominated for 8 things and won one of them. Okay, so the Gold Derby TV Award TV Movie... And the, yeah, so the thing it won was Hollywood Critics Association Mid-Season Awards 2022. It was nominated for an HCA, which I have no, oh, Hollywood Critics Association, right. It was nominated for Best Horror. And let's see, Best Actor for Sebastian Stan, Best Actress for Daisy Edward Jones. It was nominated for the Hollywood Critics Association Television Awards 2022. Let's see. The Best Writing in a Streaming Limited Series, Anthology Series, or Movie for Lauren Kahn. Best Directing in, yeah, Streaming Limited Series, Anthology Series, or Movie, Mimi Cave. Best Actress, Daisy Edgar Jones. Best Actor, Sebastian Stan. Best Streaming Movie. This is not... Uh, a particularly special effects heavy movie but the ones that there are are really really good and also not a stunt heavy movie but what there is is quite good like when when violence uh, yeah when when stunts do their job well you the viewer are either yes or you're like, ooh, that's gotta hurt. And yeah, the movie gets that out of you. And the, the violence is also supposed to be like, eesh. And the movie also accomplishes that. 
let's see the yeah i i would I, I feel i've said all that i really have to about the violence before i get into spoilers and the sexual material i also thought was yeah i i think the movie handles it right and you know the the movie really the movie does not judge the women for their sexuality and there i i was you know very happy to see very little male gaze in this I mean, maybe maybe none really and you know yeah female director and the dp has to film things the way that she says so yeah now let's see you know personally i, I don't think male gaze is always wrong i think if you if you invoke male gaze you should be commenting on it i i really don't think you should no no movie should have male gaze unironically today that's just ridiculous like I, I, we, we have to get past that. Yeah. And, yeah, so, on Disney+, Plus, it does not currently, uh, you know, in Western Europe, it does not currently have any special features. But, uh, so, 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 yeah, you know, if the, yeah. And the... Let's see, what was the other thing I wanted to say? You know, Disney Plus does have some movies that are somewhat similar. Uh, I'm just really briefly... Yeah, so these are the suggested titles when, you know, for European... Yeah, European Disney Plus when you look up this movie. Not Okay, No Exit, Gone Girl, Big Sky, The Killing, The Night House, Pam and Tommy, and flight plan now the only one of those that i have i probably will watch gone girl i've heard that it is you know now that i can yeah i almost definitely will ah uh, let's see no exit i think that's also one i am looking to yeah not okay i also thought was was really great but they are fairly different movies i mean they're they're both both have harsh language and something violent happen in them they're written and directed by women and each star a woman i guess that's <laughs> i mean you know that there are not very many movies made by for and about women when fresh and not okay because it's the first like the moment you when you go to fresh when you go to the suggested section not okay is the first one like they really don't have that much in common like, I, I could better understand stuff like No Exit and Gone Girl. Like, that makes a lot of sense. And Pam and Tommy, I mean, isn't that just because they're both Sebastian Stan? Um, The Night House. Let's see. Yeah, Night House, I could also see how that's has some, some similarities. Anyway, that... Yeah, so, you know, depending on where you are, this is either on Hulu or Disney+. Plus. And, you know, here in Western Europe, Hulu is owned, you know, enough of Hulu is owned by Disney+, Plus that for us to watch Disney+, Plus, for us to watch Hulu, we go on Disney+. Plus. So, and, yeah. I am going to... Be purposefully vague and rate this 10 dating problems out of 10. And yeah, I already mentioned I'm 100% definitely going to watch this movie again. I can't rely, I might watch it again later today. Like this was absolutely amazing. And oh, right. Yeah, I, I suppose, you know. Who do I recommend this to? I'm I tr I try to, yeah. 
if you if you love edgy humor, romantic comedy with a with a bit of a a barb and horror and you know stories that are told from the female perspective ah a female perspective there isn't one unified one yeah then this movie is for you if one of those things is not true for you you might hate this movie this is this is a very particular kind of movie and it is like i mean just the fact that it is such a scary horror movie and it's made like a, a huge chunk of the audience for this is going to be women you know so i don't know i guess they like horror movies more than you know the the stereotype goes anyway i absolutely loved it and just yeah L like i said not saying absolutely everything's perfect the 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 writing for the black characters, yeah. But the strengths so greatly outweigh the weaknesses. You know, and, and there's also, like, I've seen many horror movies that were less, like, that, that were extremely unpredictable compared to this. But, you know, a lot of them I, I didn't engage with emotionally as much. They were, they, it was maybe an intellectual engagement. You know, I, I was, like, trying to figure out... Where is it going to go next? Oh, wow, that wasn't where I thought it was going to go. But, you know, by the end of it, I wasn't as engaged in the, yeah, the, the Nolan problem, basically. Which isn't a problem for all his movies. But it is for some. And, yeah, um, I think this is a movie that is extremely relevant I, I could imagine it might be one of those that in the future more people will look back on it and more like appreciate I, I think it is it is going into some subjects that a lot of people still don't think that much about and you know hopefully in the future more people will be thinking about these things you know even if they disagree with them at least Try to think of it. I, I would argue they are extremely important, and clearly, so did the filmmakers. So, so do the filmmakers. Hence, the movie. You know, the movie is making the case that this is extremely important. And yeah, you know, maybe sometime in the future, I don't know, ten years, fifteen years from now, when more people are, as you know, that's that is sometimes the case. Some horror movies are just made, you know, before their time, and and it it sucks. But I, you know, earlier I mentioned, you know, John Carpenter's The Thing from 1982. It was not that positively received at the time. And, you know, later it's, you know, uh, is that, can I explain why without spoiling? I suppose I can't. But what I will say is it was about, a, a, it, the movie in part is about a very specific subject that at the time like some people were passionate about but a lot of people didn't care enough and while it may not necessarily be that exact same topic that is you know that that it that it is loved for you know you know since it came out yeah there's something about it that really resonates with people and that is it for the review that brings us to the thoughts sections so let's see i guess what i will do is yeah i'm going directly into notes taken while watching and as promised i will start you know so yeah from here on out spoilers but i will start with a couple of spoilers for you know if you're kind of interested in you know okay so this movie is very feminist and it is very much against patriarchy and misogyny pickup artists uh, the the commodification of the female body and yeah, so that's that's the 
dip your toe into to spoilers. If you really badly want to know what, like, a lot of this movie... Yeah, a chunk of this movie is Noah trapped in... I can't believe I'm blanking on his name. Steve's. Um, I guess it's not a house, is it? It's a... It's a yeah, he has this large property out in the middle of nowhere, and yeah, you know, so th that that is the the thing that really bothered some people is that yeah, she is stuck there for a, a long period of time, and that is, you know, there's not a lot of plot developments, but I would say you know you get you understand Steve more and more, and we come ever closer to. The climax which yeah so from here on out I you know actually yes the the MPAA and the uh, yeah so real quick I will say the rest of the video is not a review you know the the following is going to be you know yeah, analysis and the first section it's going to be in chronological order. The the yeah, the stuff I thought of as I was watching. And the the last section of this video is thoughts that I had before watching where I would guess, oh, is this gonna be in the movie? And you know, write out what I think about yeah, that kind of thing. Anyway, yeah, so the MPA other than the what I already mentioned, the MPA rated it R for strong and disturbing violent content and some bloody images. And the content warning, this content and or trigger warning, the movie features torture, kidnapping, gaslighting, drugs, murder, body horror, sexual assault and rape grief and mourning yes so that is so yeah from here on out i i you know i would not recommend watching more of this video before you've watched the movie like i will be incredibly flattered if you're still like i gotta hear what he has to say even if it it's specifically for people who've watched the movie but yeah the the video will be here when you get back. There we go. Drop my phone. Not far. That's why it didn't make a huge amount of noise, but that was what happened. So yeah. Getting into the notes. It's hard to get more relatable predate stuff than venting to a friend about like Remember, cash bar only? Wow! And, you know, she she checks her teeth in, in the mirror to see if there's anything stuck there. And it's like... Right there. Like, okay, this movie is about Noah. This is Noah. Noah is not a sex object. You know, the, it, it is not like... You, you don't see her checking her teeth in the mirror and think wow sex bomb you know you think i've been there you know so th just spot on it's it's such a great and you know it is the first of many close-ups of mouths and you know connecting it to the idea of you know eating which it very yeah it very frequently is about eating uh, you know and and the one bite that isn't about eating but is very important for both the person biting and the person being bitten. And I love that, you know, when we see the date, Noah's already zoned out. She's not paying full attention to what he's saying. Like, she's sitting there looking, oh, there's a, what is it, like a, a crab or something in, in the bottom of the, of the um, fish tank. You know, that kind of sets the tone, like, He's that boring, huh? You're you're like in a restaurant and you're like looking at the decor instead of paying attention to the date. That's 
what a disaster this day, you know, and then we realize what he's talking about, and he's like, oh, you know, I almost threw up, like, thanks, TMI, dude, wow, like, holy crap. I would like to apologize to any woman watching this video right now on behalf of my my gender and and um, uh, sexual preference. That is, no woman should have to sit and listen to that. Holy crap! Wow. Yeah, and and you know he's like, you know, ah, oh, you'd look great in a dress. It's like, oh, just. Uh, I think, I, I I tried. I tried to really really nail it down. Let's what what is, here is, a list, of times where it is a, and where it is appropriate, for a man to tell a girl, or you know a, a yeah a guy to tell a girl. Here's what I think you should wear. One of them is if she directly expresses that she would like that. Another is if she is your daughter and you are the father. It doesn't have to be father by blood. It can be adoption, but, you know, that is also a context. And that's it. That is, that is the entire list. So, yeah, that's, like, other than that, just don't... And, and you know, I forget who, but someone pointed out you're casual too, dude. You're not wear you're not exactly wearing like a, a smoking jacket or something, you know. So so just yeah, and and the you know, and yeah, and another critic pointed out it's cold out. Of course she's wearing a sweater. She'd be cold in a dress. Ya douche. And you know, he's he's like racist. I'm I am I refuse to repeat what he said. That is just but yeah, if you watch the movie, you know he's he's super racist to to the, um, yeah the 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 waitress there, and he's also like, before he even gets racist, he's like, oh come come quick, dude, you're the one who screwed up, she didn't make a mistake, and and it's just like okay, so he really likes that, um, scarf. Maybe take better care of it. Like I, mean, I know a lot of people who consider me a slob. I would just like to state, for the record, in my entire life, I would never be so careless that my clothes would dip into the food. That is wow. And he's, you know, he expects her to pay, and apparently pay for the whole thing you know, both of them, and then he takes her, um, leftovers, and he doesn't even ask, he's just like, oh, you know, my brother's in town, he's, he's gonna want this, it just, yeah, and, you know, the, yeah, the, the, the waitress comes over, and Noah's like, pretty much wrapped up, yeah, agree, best to bail, and, you know, the, the, yeah, after the, the date, he's like, oh, I'd I like to do this again sometime. And, that you know, at the very start, that's like, you know, okay, yeah. For the first, like, several seconds of them outside of the, the restaurant after the date, he's okay. He hasn't done anything yet. But then he, like, leans in to try to kiss her without, like, re like... You can see from her body language that that is not at all what she wants. So, it, like, basically, he's thinking, I like her, I want to kiss her, she's pretty, so I'm going to lean in for a kiss. He doesn't, like, notice the way that Steve, like, you know, there's a, and, and Steve is also, Steve is awful in a different way, you know, but the, or different, yeah, anyway, you know, Steve at least pretends that he does want consent before kissing or getting her to dance and these kinds of things, you know, taking a picture, all these things. And the, let's see, yeah, you know, so, it's, al it's already, like, when, when he starts, like, leaning in for a kiss, 
but she, you know, she she like leans away and maybe pu pushes him a little bit, and then she says, "I just I don't think we're a match," you know, and like. I don't, she couldn't have been more polite in, in, you know, letting him down or, uh, letting him know that the, you know, there will be no, no more dates. And then he gets like defensive and starts saying, I was just trying to be nice. You're not even my type. And at that point, you know, yeah, she like, I, I think she like ch chuckles awkwardly or, or scoffs or something. And his reaction is just hugely disproportionate. Like he explodes into misogynistic rage, and just yeah, the the yeah, you know. And and I do I I feel bad for her that she didn't, you know. She the the you know Molly comes up with a great comeback, and then he's like uh, yeah, Noah's like ah, I wish I had thought of that when you know. But she's not quite. You know, and that also tells us she's not very confrontational. So when we see her in, you know, like imprisoned, you know, we, we know this is going to be an uphill battle for her to actually. Now, the. Yeah. And, and you know, we move on with she thinks that. Uh, right, right. Yeah. The, the scoffer, awkward chuckle. I mean. You know, yeah, he takes it as her, like, laughing at him. And he, and, yeah, you know, there's that saying, women, or, uh, let's see, men fear that women will laugh at them, women fear that men will kill them. And, yeah, you know, the, the, it, it can really provoke some anxiety there, but that doesn't mean that it's okay. Like, just, honestly, if when she scoffs, like, let, let's say, I, you know, if I were in his position, which I would never be, because if my name was Shad, I would change it post haste. But let's imagine that I was Chad. You know, yeah. Let's say that I, you know, out of insecurity, I, I blurred out this thing of you know, you're not even my type, and then she like scoffs or chuckles. Just say. Well, good night. And walk away. That's all. Like, you don't have to insult. You don't have to explode out. You know, like, yell at her and, and all that. Just, yeah. And, you know, she thinks she's being followed, but it's a guy carrying his baby. See? Not every man in this movie is awful. And, you know, she has the, the keys between her, her knuckles in case she has to stab. And then at the end of the movie, you know, that, that was set up because she goes ahead and stabs Anne there, you know, and she had the, so, yeah, she had like the keys in the, in the dress under the, the, by, by the breasts. Okay. I don't, I just, to each their own. I'm not sure I would be carrying keys there, but then, you know, without pockets, you do have to come up with something. And anyway, I'm sure that's a thing. It's, you know. And, and you know, they talk about, you know, ah, uh, fuck Ariel, fuck beauty, I'm the beast, you know, love me a good takedown of animated Disney on Disney+. Plus. I have to, uh, I don't know if when that joke was written, directed, and performed, if they had any idea that, you know, it would end up, I mean, Disney aren't the only streamers around, but I like to th imagine that they thought, you know what, this might actually end up on Disney, because, I mean... Disney does that by themselves sometimes now, you know, they, they have, you know, criticisms of the movies in, wasn't it, for example, Frozen that, that made fun of, yeah. And, you know, she, we, we see her, um, 
what's it called? Swiping, I guess. I, I don't, I, I don't use dating apps, but I, yeah, I think swiping is what she's doing. And, you know, she sees a guy with a dog in the, you know, and then, oh, that's, that's cute. And so she writes, like, what's your dog's name? And, like, within moments, he's, like, dirty talking. And it's, like, again, I... As far as I understand, a lot of women have experienced that. And, again, like, come on, guys. We gotta do better than that. We have got to stop. Holy crap, like, she asked about the dog, dude, just like, turn it down a notch, you're, you're at a 10, you need to be at a 2, and then she gets the dick pic, and such an adorable first meeting with Steve, see, fellow stress, straight cis men, Women like when you're cute, funny, self-deprecating, self-aware, you know, like, yeah, he makes a bad joke, he makes, you know, a bad pickup line, bad flirting, but then he's like, oh, that was, that was bad, wasn't it, you know, like, he, he admits, you know, that's, a, he and Chad both, like, said or did something that, like, didn't, you know, she, she didn't, um, yeah, it didn't, like, win her over. But Chad got insecure and shouted at her, and Steve was like, "Oh wow, that's that was bad, wasn't it? you know?" And yeah, um, the the so if you yeah, if in case you haven't watched the movie recently, what he said was, "Do you live around here? I live on aisle six. I come to the the produce aisle to to talk to." attractive young women so something like that you know not sure if that's verbatim and then he admits that that's a terrible i mean do you live around here i live on aisle six that's a dad joke and we do see later he is a father you know so yeah and you know they they make some jokes about the plastic surgery job but then he does also say you know i was able to help this this kid that you know got got burned and and he, you know so yeah and they had dead parents in common. They're a science experiment gone wrong away from being either superheroes or supervillains. And that is, of course, also, like... I want to start by saying I lost my mother when I was a teenager, so I'm not disparaging people who are in that situation. But yeah, you know, the, the this thing of, you know, Noah having trouble being herself... Yeah, that's something I had for a while. You know, not not as much anymore as... <laughs> um, yeah, YouTube channel where I record a weekly video, at least one weekly video of several hours, where I'm myself, that's... Yeah, I'm, I'm not as shy and, and introverted as I used to be about. So, so, yeah. But yeah, you know, that is something because that's something that's supposed to come from your parents. You know, they're supposed to help you feel more, yeah, and, and also other people, but yeah, and the, uh, you know, and for him, you know, it maybe meant that some of the people who should have helped him stop, you know, I mean, I mean, he said that he was 18 years old when he first tasted human flesh. You know, I, yeah, he, he needs, you know, if, if he, he needs someone to be a Dexter to his Harry, and that could have been, I forget if it was his father or mother who died, but yeah, you know, one of his parents could have helped him out of that kind of thing. It, you know, I'm I, obviously I'm theorizing. I have no idea. For all we know, I mean, a lot of what he says turns out to be a lie, so... Maybe he never actually, you know, maybe both of his parents are still alive, uh, you know. But I got the sense that his parent, that one of his parents died when he was young. And yeah, you know, there's a, like parents set boundaries and they prevent you from becoming something you really shouldn't. And if they aren't there, 
sometimes that means you know I, I mean I I would argue none of it is bad but there are definitely things about me today that my mother tried to you know get rid of with her parenting and yeah now that I embrace them instead of feeling bad about them I'm much happier now and they joke about stalking cyber or IRL and you know I do love someone probably already has but someone it would be amazing if someone quoted this movie's line when was the last time anyone said anything intelligent on Twitter and tweeted that that would be very funny but I'm sure it you know the, the movies months old must have happened already but yeah that's that's an excellent line and it's so true like I I have I don't think what I did could technically be counted as being on Twitter there was this thing where like they were gonna give away free games if you tweeted and followed yeah so I did that I created an account I tweeted I followed nothing came of it I'm thinking they were like dude it's got no other tweets no other followers no you're not getting the game so I went you know I logged off I deleted my account haven't looked back since yeah it's I don't understand how anyone can stand Twitter but again to each their own some people love it that's great and yeah Steve is always asking her if she's okay with it if she wants to you know she feels like she can be honest or uh, yeah she is very honest with him very you know he he seems so relatable so you know for example the you know and and yeah like he even he specifically asks tell me something you don't want me to know and that's great that is such a like I really do hope that non-serial killers embrace that because that is a great way to get just because because again speaking as a former introvert once you've taken that first step like it's a huge load off like the moment that you've said the thing that you're like if I say this it's gonna be, you know as long as you're not like super insecure and and like if you say a thing like just try to move on if it's not well received but if you just hold on to it and never say it that's you know yeah and you know yeah he asks her and she says I hate this not you but the dating and so does he and you know and she says that she says I think people who believe that we'll find the one and you'll be happy are fucking idiots and again I think that might be you know I mean I think it was maybe her father who died maybe her mother never remarried maybe her mother is you know really unhappy because she was raised with the belief that no you just gotta find the one then you marry them and that's it and then well, what happens if the one dies like what are you supposed to do what you know and if you're of a certain age especially as a woman it's extremely difficult to find a a new partner you know so yeah her mother is just miserable and and you know every so often like Noah maybe calls her or texts her and you know she just gets the the sense oh she's so lonely and she's like is that it is that what I have to hope for I I marry someone and then they end up you know and also she's been on a lot of bad dates so that yeah and they have sex and there's a shower afterwards with no male gaze I absolutely love it you know and he goes down on her you know it's not the the ah yeah it's 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 not uh, penis and vagina sex and it's not you know he doesn't expect her to do anything it's just he goes down on her and that you know of course sets up for later yeah 
I really, I, I, I love how this movie sets something up, and you don't even really think about it, and then later, massive payoff, just, yeah. And, yeah, he convinces her to go to this mystery location, and they arrive. No signal. Ah, uh, fuck, the Wi-Fi must be out again. Must be. Must be. And he gets her to keep drinking by saying he puts something unusual in the drink. And, I, I mean, I guess at the end she does actually identify it, or it's, certainly he seems to, to think that it's, yeah. And, and the, yeah, just, and, and the, the, the element of the movie that he's, you know, he's, he's a man of refined tastes. You know, he likes mixing his own drinks and putting a little something extra in. Maybe, maybe you can notice it. Just, just take, take another little sip. Just, ah, uh, it's not quite bad. You're close, though. You're close. Try again. Guess again, you know. And so he also prepares human meat for, for consumption of, you know, it's, it's just absolutely just wow you know and and yeah he's a plastic surgeon so he knows how to remove part of the body without killing the patient and in a um you know arrange it in a way you know if he wasn't a plastic surgeon you know like a regular surgeon if if you just have to get the the leg off you're not necessarily thinking about what's the leg gonna look like afterwards because no one cares about the leg afterwards you just get it getting it off before the patient dies from you know uh let's see amputation i guess that would usually be something like ah uh, i can't believe i'm blanking on it but but yeah you know if if it's infected and the infection might spread you may have to amputate no doctor is going to care what the the leg looks like when it's been removed you know that's just you know you you get yeah, don't they? I, I feel like they, they probably get rid of that as quickly as they can because it's like a source of disease. So, yeah, you know, but he's a yeah plastic surgeon. He's always good about cutting in, in a subtle way. So chilling when she starts to pass out from the drink. The other shoe dropped and then so did Noah. And Steve is nonplussed. He, pour, he gets up and pours himself another drink. You know, he's just in there. You know, why don't you, why don't you, and, and yeah, he even says, why don't you come a little closer, because once she stands up, then she'll fall, you know, that it it's more of a, in, instead of having her just remain seated. I love how late the opening credits run, and then just, like, the opening credits, you, you know, okay, this is a horror movie now, the rest of this movie is a horror movie. But yeah. It's 30 minutes into the movie. The first 30 minutes are a rom-com. And she wakes up. Steve continues to be calm. She realizes she's chained to the floor. And he says, I drugged you. At first, she thinks he must be making another joke. Because they've made a bunch of jokes, you know, that were... What's going on? I'm going to tell you, but you're going to freak out. Just, Yeah. And she asks, increasingly insistent for him to take the chain off, and cries when she realizes he really won't. You know, it's it's like at first she's just like she, it's it's this thing of, you know. So so yeah, this is it is ultimately a defeat. At at first she asks like kind of you know calmly and normally, and she gets increasingly like, you know, on on some level she hopes that if she says it with enough confidence he will realize how awful because it is you know that the, at least that's my reading of it that's why she's continuing to say because like you know if you've watched many of these movies like yeah i'm not sure the the it's it's probably not very common for that request to be granted you know but yeah so so the yeah, what's the word the Yeah, you know, she does manage to make a more confident, insistent plea, but yeah. It does make it so much creepier and scarier that he's still so calm. He calmly explains things. He does shout to get her attention, to get her to focus, but yeah. And he, you know, and yeah, about 30 minutes in, he explains the whole thing. 
I'm going to keep you alive for a while. The meat is best if fresh. I'm going to sell your meat and your hair. And you know, just calmly lays out all the terms of this entire situation and just yeah you know the rest of the movie is her trying to figure out how she could how you know how to escape and you have this you know a lot of solidarity between the women and you have molly you know tracking down the wife who's on facebook and yeah and he even made sure to stay at the other end of the room you know at first we think oh you know like like he said i'm not going to come closer i'm going to stay at this end of the room you know to make her feel safer so he has some understanding he actually realizes that she would be even more scared if he was very close to her also but you know we realize part of him staying at the other end of the room was so she couldn't overpower him the chain meant she could barely reach him and the the what's the um it, yeah you know again that underlines or it sets up i guess there is no way for her to get free without dealing with the chain and right now he realizes that he has to you know that she might attack and because of that, she's going to, or, or yeah, um, he, yeah, she might attack, and he's going to try to stay far enough away from her to make it to make it very difficult for her to effectively attack. So yeah, she has to get him to lower his guard again, and you know he brings her normal food. And yeah, it does look tasty because he wants her to do well, so the meat will be better. You know, it's it's such a like, it's so chilling to realize, and and that is the thing. Like, you know, in real life, it's I I don't know that there's you know some some people have interpreted this movie as oh there's probably cannibals out there. I really don't think that's what the movie is about, though. I I think what we're supposed to take away from it is they're basically just exaggerating the um yeah i'm gonna get into it in the in the next section but yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna save my thoughts on something on that exact thing but but yeah you know he brings her you know like in a lot of like when you when you watch a movie and someone's in prison or someone's been kidnapped or something you know, the, it's it's like this absolutely terrible looking food, you know. And then, yeah, here, like, you know, it's a nice place that they're in. And, you know, he's giving her good food. And in his mind, that somehow makes this okay. And that's the, that's the thing that is so jaw-dropping. And that's why it's, you know, yeah, this... This major reveal happens 30 minutes in, and for the rest of the movie, you know, he legitimately, like, at no point does he even consider letting her go. Like, he was going to, you know, they, like, hypothetically, if she hadn't bitten him, which I'm really glad she did, if she hadn't, yeah, I guess if they were going to have sex, he would probably have put her back in the chain, or maybe, like, Okay, you don't have to go back in chains, but you know I'm not gonna stop kidnapping women and and this whole thing, you know. So just yeah, like he probably thinks you're you know you sleep in a in a really great place and you know I gave you a bath, I gave you a toilet. There's a there's a you know you get really good food and you know he talks to her he he doesn't just shove in the food and then leave at least you know some some of the times like eventually he'll leave but some like there are a couple of times where she'll like ask a question and he'll actually answer it you know there's there's so many of these stories where that isn't the the case and part of what's supposed to be scary and is scary is the coldness with which they're treating but here he legitimately seems to care about her 
and yet he can't bring himself to not like we see that his his wife Anne also has this uh, you know she she has a prosthetic leg so you know yeah there's a theory and i agree with it that she, she was an early victim of his you know and then later they ended up getting together you know and yeah you know like Can we, are we sure he didn't do it to his own mother, maybe? Maybe that was how it started, like the, um, yeah, didn't, I think he said that his father is still alive and in Texas, which uh, might be a lie. Maybe his mother, when his mother died, he, you know, yeah, for some reason, he decided to try to taste some of her flesh and he decided that he was going to keep doing that. And that was, yeah, maybe to some, maybe that's his way of keeping her alive. Uh, you know, some some kind of twisted, just, yeah. Anyway, it seems like every single woman he comes into contact with, he, you know, tries to, to take her meat. And Steve texts Molly from Noah's phone to trick Molly and Noah learns Penny and Melissa are in adjoining rooms and you know Molly you know I guess she sort of accepts and then you know the the text and then she texts back love you and she gets a heart emoji where obviously if it was actually still Noah she would have responded, love you more. And again, just set up and pay off because, let's see, there was the time, yeah, when 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 Noah's about to go on the date, we have the first example. I forget which of them says goodbye first, but one of them says love you, the other says love you more. And then again, when they're on the phone later again, it, yeah, you know, it happens, I'm almost certain it happens at least twice. And then, twice. And then this third time, it's like, because Steve doesn't know that. Steve doesn't know. He hasn't heard their conversations. So, yeah. And Steve dances as he prepares the meat. And it's just like, what? Yeah. And, and that's something that a lot of people compared to American Psycho, which is the primary reason I put it back there. And, you know, and yeah, just briefly, you know, so there's some, uh, let's see, I guess it would be easier to just, uh, yeah. So we have Henry, portrait of a serial killer, so also a serial killer, and then, you know, a man who attacks women. And the, you know, the other covers are Amityville, the, the original, the box set, and the, which has the original and the remake, and then the remake. And, yeah, you know, they're about a woman who thinks she can trust a man, and he turns out to be dangerous. You know, and, and even if you guessed that from seeing it back there before I got into spoilers, you know, who says that Steve is going to be that man? It could be, you know, could easily be someone else. So, anyway. Or maybe you thought, oh, so there's going to be, like, haunting stuff in the movie. So, yeah. But, yeah, that was... Wow, I am not going to be able to get the his dancing out of my head for quite some time. And Steve asks for a smile, and Noah forces one out, and just, yeah. He literally, like, he's doing this monstrous thing to her, and he still asks her to smile. And, you know, the, the she tries to, to get away, and he knocks her out, gives her an epidural, and cuts off the butt as consequences and you know and and penny is talking to, to you know to noah and she's like i didn't have sex with him i don't think any of the other girls did i'm not slutching you i'd say it's a compliment it's a compliment it's a compliment the serial killer who abducted you and has already started cutting parts off you he likes you. You're special. 
I mean, if that's not gonna, that, if that is not enough to make her smile, I honestly have no idea how. It's not our fault, Noah. It's always theirs, 100%. I absolutely love that. And that's actually, that is one of the, that's, uh, yeah, one of the memorable quotes is the, you know, it's not our fault. And, yeah, you know, another is Molly, say, you know, saying about Ariel from Disney's Little Mermaid, stupid bitch left the whole sea for a man. I mean, she has a point. Molly does, not Ariel. And, you know, Steve saying, you know, giving yourself over to somebody, becoming some, that, that whole thing, that's love. And, you know, after Anne, af after Molly kills Anne in self-defense, Noah's like, who the hell was that? Steve's wife. What? He's married? Was. Was married. <laughs> yeah, those are, those are very, very funny, and I feel very bad for laughing at them. And Molly gets the, the full name from the bartender and tries to find Steve, which is quite a clever, and, you know, because he does have this wife, you know, which also, I, I saw someone here on YouTube point out, when Molly goes to talk to Anne, she literally just thinks, like, I mean, if my partner was cheating on me, I'd want someone else to let me know. You know, she has no idea about kidnapping. She literally just thinks, oh, He's married, just like I said. She, she should have listened, but okay. I'm going to, you know, she shouldn't have to live with a, a partner that cheats on her. And, you know, when Noah goes to the bathroom, you know, we see her bloody underwear. It's just ugh, really, really uncomfortable. I've... The, the, Never has so little blood in a horror movie made me this uncomfortable. Like, it's just, you know, usually I'd be like, wow, that tiny little bit of blood. No, but it's, wow. Extra cherries. You earned it. Wow. And he got her women's magazines. And Smile More is their advice. And he's still talking to her like he's just relatable. You know how you wake up early and you know you can't fall back? Don't you hate that? Wow. Try to relax. Fear and stress isn't good for the meat. And Sammy wrote a message into the magazine. If you're reading this, it means he likes you. Keep fighting. And Penny imagines Steve and the customers in extreme pain. You do realize how strange that sounds, right? There are a lot of funny lines in this movie. There are a lot of movies where, you know, one or more young women is the captive of a man who wants something from her. I'm not sure I know of any others where it's told with so much sympathy for her, from her perspective, with empathy for women in general. As much empathy for women in general, at least. And Steve says that human meat can taste fucking exquisite like nothing you've ever had before. And Molly gets no help from Anne or Steven, so she calls Noah's phone. It rings in Steve's pocket. And he and Anne knock her out. Like another critic said, I will never hear the Golden Ge Girls theme the same again. And... Again, like she probably you know in in Molly's like she probably thought okay so i mean i mean i don't think she was surprised to find that the you know she certainly thought that the phone would ring somewhere within her earshot otherwise why not just wait you know why not ring after you leave their house but no she legitimately thought and yeah like if it legitimately is Steve is a married man and he had sex with someone other than his wife, if his wife finds out about that, you know, surely 
she will be, you know, she she will. Ah, what's the word? The the um, yeah, it it will reveal. She yeah, she will become aware that she is married to a man who cheats, and she'll you know like maybe kick him out of the house, and you know yeah, if it's ringing from like a room down the hall or something, well that's where Noah is. You know, so, yeah, but she did not at all expect Anne to be in on it, nor did, you know, I, I had no idea. I really thought that, yeah. And we see that Anne has a prosthetic leg, so Steve cut her leg off many years ago, and then they got married. She internalized the objectification, Stockholm Syndrome. And I, I hear that Stockholm Syndrome might not be, secondly, be completely real, so I... Yeah, but I'm using that as shorthand. Steve, let's see. Oh, right, Noah has dinner with Steve, and as she, as he prepares the food, she tries to spot anything useful, and he describes loving human meat. It sounds like a fetish, and you know, in this case, it, it sounds like the only wrong kind of fetish, non-consensual. And I really was beyond disgusted when Noah tried human meat. And we get this montage of the 1% of the 1% eating it. And, you know, the way Noah and Steve are talking, it's like when they were dating. You know, Noah has come to realize it is her best chance of getting away. She realizes she... That, you know, he must want to talk about preparing human meat. It's clearly important to him, so she pretends that she's interested. She's treating it like any date with a misogynist. Just tell them what they want to hear until you can get to safety. Oh, you know, the part about getting to safety wasn't something that she... You know, but but yeah, she's... Like, uh, at, at the date at the start, where the date says... You know, I uh, it it's like I'm gonna throw up, something like that. You know, she responds with "that must suck for you" when the like, if she wasn't uh, projecting her best self, if she was just letting herself say the first thing that I mean, presumably the first thing that came to mind was, "Why would you tell me that? That's disgusting." You know, so. Yeah, she and yeah, and and Steve says, "You know how I knew you were special because you're fucked up too," and it's just it's so gross that he thinks that there's much at all in common between the two. But yeah, some just can't. And it throws up the human meat, of course. And Steve gets her a pink dress for her to wear. It is definitely not a coincidence. It is definitely very meaningful for this movie that the one time she puts on a dress, it's because a man asks her to. That and and it's a man that she has to render vulnerable. Is this a date, Steve? And Noah eats more human liver and the things. This is Melissa, and she responds that it's a boring name. Oh no, there's more hope left. Oh, wow. Welcome to my world. So creepy and disgusting. I appreciate that the movie lets us, the viewer, know something about Penny that she's comfortable sharing with Noah that I, I doubt any of the clients find out. If she had an imaginary friend, she wouldn't name her Noah. It would be Sean Connery. Even if they take all they can, they can't possess her fully. And yes, I realize that was a while back, but the importance of it really dawned on me when they're sitting there eating Melissa. And, yeah. Right, and, and some people say that the the breast that, that Steve serves is probably Molly since he carried her off to to you know do surgery on her 
and we see her clutch her chest afterwards and he says to her this might taste familiar you saved the breast for last she's got better tits than me you're not gonna correct me and she says I feel awful because I don't feel awful because it's you know again like my read is she definitely does feel up. yeah yeah you know she she vomited up the first human meat she definitely feels awful about you know yeah eating human meat but she knows that he doesn't and if yeah if she tricks him into thinking that then he'll lower his guard we get some more great awkward white people dancing now, some people love the last 15 minutes as much as, you know, other just, yeah, as, as much as the first 30 minutes are great. I can see why, but I do love all in between as well. And Noah seduces him. I love the editing going back and forth between the dancing, her preparing for a role in this whole thing. And yeah, so she, she goes into the, the bathroom and gets toothpaste on her, on her fingers. So she, you know, she's not going to use those to, to bite. And then she goes in, because because at that point, she has already pulled his pants down. And then she's like, oh, I, I got it really quick, you know. And he's like, my pants are around my ankles. I'm in heaven. You know, you don't have to. Yeah. And the, yeah. So, you know, she comes back out and bites his dick off and rubs toothpaste in his eyes. Which, yeah, that's a, because, you know. She has to work with what she's got. It's not, you know, we're not going to get MacGyver with this shit. So, yeah, toothpaste in the eyes, that's definitely that's definitely going to slow him down. And that's all she can hope for right now. And the escape is very exciting. And I love that Noah frees both of the still alive girls. We, we know that Melissa is dead. That Steve, yeah, Stephen said that during the dinner. And there's really no reason for him to be lying because he's not like... You know, uh, threatening Noah with with killing her or something, and Noah and Molly don't even consider leaving behind Penny, even though the two of them could get up those stairs without her. You know, it's the uh, I guess they use the dumb waiter that you know complete solidarity. Absolutely love it. So castration is by some considered to be the single worst thing that a woman can do to a man. Many consider the penis to be you know, maybe not itself the main status symbol of a man, but what it can attract, the women it comes into contact with. And it is arguably the most easily visible external difference between men and women. It is a way for a woman to hurt a man that no man can completely reciprocate. And as such, it makes sense as a form of poetic justice, as he has hurt them in ways that men can hurt women, but women can't hurt men due to patriarchy. Love seeing all three of them fight Steve. And, you know, as they they get outside, Steve says the following. Noah, you lied to me. I'm sorry, is that what you want me to say? He legitimately does not understand her or empathize with her. Even even in this situation, he doesn't stop and, and say, like, wow. And, and that really tells me, you know, he's... He's given a chance. He's given a chance to reform and to, to, you know, but no, he's, you know, the, the, yeah, right. You know, when, when he, you know, he, he tries to shoot them when he thinks that they can't. Yeah. And I love, you know. Earlier, Steve asked, you know, said to Noah, "Come on, give me a smile." And then here, it's Noah saying it to Steve, and she shoots him in the face. That's just absolutely perfect. And Anne investigates Steve's place, cleans up with an assistant, puts his body on ice. Noah finds her phone, but also Anne, who tries to strangle her. Noah stabs Anne with the keys she read at the slip film, and Molly takes a shovel to Anne. And I, I love that, you know, as the as the three women are trying to, you know, 
yeah, they're like they're outside and they're trying to make their way. They're trying to get away from the house, and you know Molly and Noah like. I think Noah apologizes to Molly about not listening to her, not trusting her enough or something. And, you know, Penny, who's in the middle of, you know, there, she's literally the, the third wheel, fifth leg in this situation. And she's like, you, you two are adorable or so you, you're really cute. Something like that, you know, was married. I fucking love you, Molly. I love you more. And the movie ends on two women asserting their platonic love for one another after coming through for each other. And then the camera pans down and maybe Chad, the bad date from the start, texts you up. The only way to beat patriarchy is for women to help each other, even under extreme circumstances. And Chad's are part of the problem. No, obviously it is not. You know, the problem with patriarchy isn't that not enough women are... You know, it. Or, Even if all women work together, it's also going to take, you know, the, uh, you know, laws and political positions and such favoring men over women is a, a big part of the problem. You know, a lot of men continue to wield their power to make women miserable. And... Yeah, so... The... Yeah, there, there are some people who say, why would Steve trust her for the, you know, oral sex? You have to admit she was putting on an incredible act. And he has expressed that he does not seem to understand that there's something really wrong with what he does on the first date he performed oral on her so you know to his twisted mind that doesn't realize that what he's done is monstrous it seems oh she's just returning the favor and there are countless men who express disbelief when their partner does or says something that hurts the man even when it's obvious that the man has been abusive towards her You know, we know now that Donald Trump cheated on his wife. I want to say, was it maybe soon after she gave birth to his son? Now, that's his son. She didn't, like, cheat. That wouldn't make it okay. But I, I know there are a lot of men who would cheat on their partner if they found out their partner cheated on them. She had just given birth. And I'm almost also... I'm, yeah, and, and it was to one of his sons. So that, that's also a thing. Some men freak out if the, the their partner gave birth to a, a daughter instead of a son. And he cheats on her. He goes out and, and contacts a porn, porn star, has sex with her, and then pays her to keep the the secret and he's surprised when she doesn't want to hold his hand when they're walking i, I want to say from like maybe air force one or something you know lance they're walking and they're you know they're walking next to each other because you know job he thinks that if he if he tries to hold her hand she'll want to hold his hand after that after he has done that to her he still thinks no, no no you know that's that's one of the things that comes to my mind when i see steve ask noah to smile even as he's cutting her up you know it it legitimately like and and that's where like if i was if I had ever been a Trump supporter, that would have been like a major thing where I would be like, you can't possibly think that she'd still want you. Like, I guess if he, ha I, I guess he must hate her. He can't possibly, you, I mean, who would do that to someone you love? 
just, yeah, anyway. Now, some people believe that the movie and the movie's ending does not conclude the film properly, since yes, Steve is dead, so is Anne. Their clientele are still out there. However, it seems like he was either the only one or one of the only people doing this, you know, kidnapping women, cutting them up, and sending out the their meat. So the clientele might not be able to continue this. And personally, I think it's perfect that there are, the movie ends with all these awful people out there because patriarchy is still in place. The movie isn't saying that it's enough to stop one misogynist. It is necessary to stop the system that let this continue. And to anyone who says, what system? Well, look at how many people had to be part of this. It wasn't just Steve and the 1% of the 1% eating people. You have people transporting the meat. And, you know, like... Let's see. And, you know, in real life, there are people who help each other and help build systems that help each other abuse women. I really love that the black guy noped out of the movie. He's like, ah, oh, this is a horror movie, and I'm a black guy. I am leaving before I die. And the... Let's see. The... Um... What was the other thing that I... Yeah, I guess it's it's probably coming up in the next section. So, final section. Notes taken before watching. Right, so, yeah, some people have said, uh, you know... Stan is a great, you know, he's he's great as scary here. He is scarier here than in the MCU, the times where he's evil, and that's a that's a really high bar. Like he is really scary in those. Yeah, I I really hope movies like you know I heard he also did great in Pam and Tommy. I really hope that he gets a, a lot of chances to to diversify because. Uh, He's incredibly talented. It's it's unreal. And let's see. Yeah, so quoting fellow critics, at various parts throughout the movie, the story begins to feel like a vast metaphor of modern life, catering to pockets of rich men in seclusion scattered across the globe, hinting as it does about the commoditization of people where everything and everyone has a price. Fresh might even be regarded as a precursor to the full and final chapter of capitalism before the structure more or less collapses into sheer depravity and decadence. Or maybe the movie is simply a cautionary tale about eating animals. Either, either way, it certainly has the 1% of the 1% in its crosshairs. If that's going too far, the allegories nonetheless contain elements of truth, as Steve supplies his wealthy customers in domestic lands with goods no one should be able to procure and sell. He operates in the shadows, largely with impunity. And, uh, yes, the message of the movie is, this is how men and the patriarchy consume and abuse women for their own pleasure. A man will literally eat a woman's body and ask her to smile more as he does it. All women know and hate this. And yeah, so a couple of things that I wrote before. So yeah, pickup artists think of women not as people, but as objects for them to enjoy, consume, and possess like a dessert. Sure, you have to pay some cost a lot, but taste better. But no one asks a dessert if it consents. Once you've paid, it's yours to enjoy. And in this movie, they made the metaphor literal. This pickup artist literally does consume women see them as objects to enjoy he cuts them into pieces so they can be enjoyed one part at a time similar to the male gaze camera or the you know the, the pictures in your profile for a uh, what's the word um, dating profile He's willing to spend time with the meat that the average pickup artist wants to have sex with, but he wants to eat, but to be sure, neither of them considers her more than meat before eating. Like, 
standing in line for a dessert. He even feeds her oil to make sure she tastes better, like she's a factory farm animal or something. And pickup artists approach dating like they are a predator and women are their prey, so the idea of making that metaphor literal with cannibalism makes a lot of sense as a way to comment on it. And, you know, I don't want to hear anyone say, oh, you know, men don't really think... I forget the name, but there's this guy who said that the reason you should talk to men about what women want out of the men they date, rather than women, is that if you want to be a fisherman, talk to another fisherman, don't ask the fish. Like, I, I love that, like, his accidental honesty, okay, so, you think that killing a fish and getting a woman into bed is basically the like metaphorically they're they're equivalent like it's just it's yeah and you know a bunch of people idolize this guy and you know with online dating the person you match with can spend forever staring at your still photos maybe they don't think of you as a person but as something attractive that doesn't move that's dead how can you be sure that person doesn't prefer you to not be moving? You know, and, and that's the thing, like, he doesn't, it's not only the meat. And he claims women taste better. But, I, I mean, I feel like that's, I, I, I mean, that might be that he thinks it is more satisfying to have power over women than over men. Or maybe the, the way that he has power over them yeah but the you know yeah he in, in in addition to the meat he includes like some of their some of the clothing and like personal artifacts it's just yeah they want to possess these women they want to have them in a in a very yeah so yeah Apparently, a lot of the movie is Noah trying to avoid upsetting Steve, even as he plans to cut her up and eat her. Now, obviously, usually this would be a metaphor, but countless young women have found themselves too close to a man because he made her think that he was safe to be around, who would destroy them if given enough time and opportunity, and they had to wait for the right time to get away from there. Now, I've seen a number of people say that the movie is completely disgusting. Now, obviously, cannibalism is only ever okay in real life if it literally is the only way to stay alive. You know, I I do wonder if the reviewers who... Uh, I did wonder if the reviewers who especially go hard on this have watched zombie movies. You know, I agree it's strange, but the idea of seeing someone eating a person on camera isn't maybe not as extreme if you watch zombie movies, many of which have that happen, including some where people are eaten while they're still alive. Yeah, I honestly, like, I thought, I mean, I've watched George Romero zombie movies. I've seen people pulled limb from limb while they're screaming, while they're alive, and zombies, you know, put the meat in their mouths and eat it, even as the, the person is screaming in agony. Yeah, the movie still got to me. Somehow, watching this, I was still, like, completely just, yeah, it really got to me. When, when it was, it was absolutely repulsive and revolting when it went into the, the human meat eating. I've been trying to figure out if there's some significance of the biblical name Noah. I mean, maybe I I haven't been able to think of any. If if you can think of any, please put it in the comments. And yeah, so the the thing about eating human meat, I I I saw at least one critic say, "What's the point other than being gross?" he him cutting him him taking the meat from from women, actual women is part of the way that you know he he can get away with this he can he can continue to cut up people cut up women 
sell you know sell their food to a bunch of different people where you know it has to be like shipped there and along the line you know along the way no one stops this no one says this is insane we have to stop this this is unacceptable and yeah you know he to steve it is basically you know something that his privileged position has allowed for you know he it, he says he likes the you know the taste is amazing and and he you know yeah when she asks what does it taste like and he starts you know uh, what's the word preparing some of it for her it's a way for him to feel like he's sharing his privileged position with her but she she can't actually enjoy it because she realizes that it is built upon the pain and misery of other women you know Anne didn't see it that way she is okay with it you know maybe in part because it means that he stops cutting her and the let's see. right and and i agree I've, I've seen at least one critic point out this movie is not saying that technology is bad because technology is a huge part of why things work out you know technology is how molly gets to where noah is and if molly hadn't been there Anne would have killed Noah there at the end. You know, she used the, the you know, sh the, let's see. Uh, yeah, I guess ultimately the, the picture that Noah took of Steve doesn't really make a difference either way. But the, uh, let's see. She, you, yeah, the, 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 the place where she goes to find the, um, let's see. Yeah, you know, she she texts she she shares her location with the I'm gonna get his name right, Paul, the bartender. And that's you know, oh okay, wait a second. I guess she yeah. Ultimately, he ends up he he nopes out of the movie, so that didn't. But the there we go. She finds Anne by Googling the name. I forget. Something like Brendan Peter something. And yeah, that, you know, that gets her there, which ends up meaning that she gets captured. But that means that she can stop Anne from killing Noah. And 100%, like if... Molly had not shown up like yeah you know uh, uh, Noah manages to stab her in the in the neck with the the car keys and it gets her off her but if Molly hadn't come running and beaten her to death with the shovel you know no uh, Molly uh, uh, Anne would definitely have been able to kill Noah because she had nothing left you know she didn't have the gun anymore or at least, or maybe not any more bullets, or you know, whatever. She had already used the the stabbing thing. Like, if Molly hadn't shown up, Anne would just have pulled out the keys and thrown thrown them far away, and then attacked. Uh, you know, yeah. And and Anne isn't recovering from surgery, and she hasn't just been running to to get away from from Steve, like Noah. So yeah. And yeah. So, the, yeah, let me know what is your favorite movie like this, what is your, you know, what's, what's the best horror movie you've seen that was written and or directed by women, and, yeah, you know, what do you hope is there something specific you hope that the that Mimi Cave directs next, or I can't think I'm blanking on her name, but Lauren Kahn writes next? Is there one of Lauren Kahn's twenty shorts that is especially good that I that I should definitely make sure to watch? Let's see. Yeah. 
If you like this video, please thumbs up, subscribe, hit that little bell like it is part of the Steve's Kitchen to 1% of the 1% food pipeline. There should be a link to my main channel page, one, two more links to stuff like relevant playlists, a suggested video for you to watch on screen right about now. I put out one vlog per week reviewing and sharing spoiler thoughts on a movie and one talking about my spoiler -filled thoughts on the most recent episode of the current Disney Plus MCU show, which these days is She-Hulk, and one talking about my spoiler -filled thoughts on the most recent episode of the current Disney Plus Star Wars show, which these days is Andor, and recently the review and thoughts videos tend to come out very similar to this one. In other words, if you want my videos like this, you're in luck. You can check out my back catalog as well as catch my video next week. Hope you enjoyed watching as I enjoyed watching or recording, and I'll catch you next time.